Hello everyone. Today I am here with Ibis Paint X version 11 and I'm going to use all the new features to see how those work out for me. So let's get started with it. At first we have material search and brush search features. I personally really love it, especially the material search because there are over thousands of material available these days and it's just so difficult to scroll for eternity to find something specific. For example, I searched for blood and got all these splatters and chose one of them to apply on her face and then I edited it. The brush search is very useful, like you can see that I can just type pen and all the brushes with the name pen will appear. Same goes for oil or watercolor or any kind of brushes. My rating for this new search feature is 5 out of 5 because it's super convenient. The next thing is the history button. It's nice to have all the previous modification options side by side. And as you can see, the list is pretty long as well. I know that this is supposed to be a helpful change, but it's not that helpful for me because I am so used to click on the adjust color option which is right beside the history button I keep clicking on it without looking anything and end up clicking on the history button instead I know it's a me thing but it's a thing so just for that I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 now I'm going to check out the retro game effect you can find this option under artistic section. I know it looks very burnt and ugly in the recording, but it was actually better when I was working on the screen itself. You can play around with the dot size, saturation and other parameters. There's a button called realistic. If you click on it, it retains more features and color from the OG picture. Personally, I have no use of this filter unless I want to try some kind of texture. So I'm not going to give it any rating. It looks cool, but I don't think it suits every art style. So if you are into retro game style, then maybe you can try it with pixel art or something like that. Next, I'm going to be using the AI background remover option. So to do that, you have to go to the AI section and click on background remover. And then to remove the background part, we have to select the subject and when you touch the desired area, it turns into blue color to indicate that it has been selected. But unfortunately, the precision is really bad. I'm not sure how it's working for you guys, but for me, it keeps selecting the background for some reason. I have tried it numerous times while trying to change the threshold, trying to add more points to make it understand that I want to select this part only, but it's still not working. And if you want to remove the background by selecting the background, all you have to do is click on the minus sign and then click on the part which is your background but once again the precision was not right and it did not work so i'm not sure how to feel about this new feature maybe i have to use it some kind of 
other way or have to check it with some other artwork but for this one it did not work if i really want to remove background i would rather use the magic wand instead let me show you why and how so all you gotta do is choose the magic wand tool tap on the area that you want to remove or want to keep and it will automatically select the desired area i know the background is simple so it's easier to do it by the magic wand but i have removed other backgrounds which were comparatively complex than this one with the help of magic wand see how easily and how well it removes the background for you so this new feature is one out of five for me or maybe two because i'm generous there's another alternative for removing background that is color range if you have similar color in the background then you would be able to place those little buttons and use it to remove any unwanted background but then again you have to be careful because if there is some kind of similar color it might end up removing everything altogether so the best option for removing background is magic wand now it's time for some fun aka the spin blur option I was really excited about this feature, so let's check out how it works. Initially after clicking on the spin blur effect, you would be able to see a circular motion blur is being created. But we can customize it to our own liking. So here I changed the radius and the aspect ratio to make it look like an elliptical pathway instead of circular and i'm very happy that it's just not a circular blur effect but we can change the aspect ratio to our liking just a basic circular spin blur won't be sufficient all the time so after changing the parameters till it worked for me i have this now to remove the unwanted blurred parts, I'm just going to use a soft airbrush eraser. And that's how you can use the spin blur effectively. I had to do this because it is a complete art and not divided into layers. But if you have things that are placed in different layers, then you don't have to do this erasing stuff and all that. This new feature gets a solid 4 or 4.5 from me. I really loved it. And finally, it's time to see the animation feature. Honestly, I did not expect them to drop this all of a sudden. Ibis Pentex keeps surprising me. So let's not waste any time and get to the final segment i hope you guys are not disappointed seeing the flat color that's going on i tried it with full color and no i could not do it it's very very difficult for a newbie like me hence i had to do it with flat colors only and honestly at some point i thought of just keeping it as line art and call it a day but I didn't want to make it look too lame, so I pushed myself. Good for me, I guess. So first things first, for this animation effect to work on, you have to select specific canvas modes. And unfortunately, all the higher resolution versions are locked for prime members only. So yeah, that was pretty disappointing. They won't even let you choose the SD version. I can understand about HD or Full HD, but they won't even let you use the 
simple as D version. So I had to go for the LLD option that is 640 by 640 which is very small. And now let me show you the frames and all that I have used. I have used 13 frames for this one second animation and for a newbie like me it was almost a nightmare but the onion skin thing really helped so if we click on the frames we can see the duration of it the minimum duration is 0 0.08 second you can increase it as you wish but the more you are going to increase the duration the weirder and laggier it's going to look so i would suggest you to keep it within 0 0.08 second or 0.16 second so when we click on the animation settings we can see several options one is looping the second one is ping pong which is going back and forth and the third one is just simple one shot. Then comes the onion skin settings. By default, the onion skin setting is not turned on. We have to turn on manually and we can change it to both past or future. I have turned on the both option so that I can see the position of the previous and the next frame. There are some opacity settings and all that. You can change it to your liking. My respect for 2D animators increased to a level that I cannot even comprehend. It took me a lot of time to get used to the whole thing. And the more I worked on it, the more I realized that I can use some shortcut ways to make the process less time consuming. But that's a talk for a different time. In the past, I have done animation once or twice on Procreate. And the animation settings were more or less similar. But I think IB spent was comparatively easier for me to understand. So, now let's see how it looks like if we turn on the play button. And also, please don't judge my animation skills. I know nothing. Absolutely nothing. Took me four and a half hour to make this barely one second of animation, which isn't even that good. So this animation experience has been a 50-50 situation for me. Like, I wish I could do it on a higher resolution canvas, not 640 by 640. On the other hand, the animation settings was relatively easier to understand and to work on. I especially loved how each frame had their own layers. So, you do not have to smoosh everything into single layer, which is incredible. So, I am going to give it a 3 out of 5. I would have given 2.5, but the animating experience was good, so they deserve the extra 0.5. I would have given it a 4 or 5 if they would let me work on at least a thousand pixel resolution. Before I forget to mention this, when you export the video, there will be a watermark at the right hand corner, which I personally do not like. And also the video quality won't be that great, which is expected. So I would definitely suggest you to screen record instead of exporting the video. Maybe I should give it 2.5 after all. I should be fair. So if I average out all the ratings, it gets a 3.4 out of 5 from me. 
In the future, if they improve the background remover AI thing or the animation canvas, it might even get a 4 from me. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know what's your favorite feature from this new update and if you have used the animation on Spent Text yet. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.